previously on Alone in the Dark. Now keep in mind, when I bought this game, I hadn't previously seen any reviews. I read the reviews shortly after playing the game a bit, and you know, having played the game somewhat, I had a good feeling and understanding for what was good about it and what wasn't so great about it. And I'm here to show just about everybody on GameFAQs who bashed this just how fucking wrong you are and just how bad you really are at gaming. And I mean, this is really not that damn difficult. Where are these invisible barriers you're supposed to be at? You assholes probably try to continue to accelerate over the fucking hump, even though you rush, you know, you're not going anywhere because the fucking ground is higher than the car at this point. Here we go, here we go, he caught up! The whole fucking world around you is collapsing and being destroyed. You don't drive straight. You drive like a fucking lunatic to get to the end. Honestly, not one of you who reviewed this game badly knows how to fucking play video games. If anyone's seen the highly unprofessional video review that GameSpot put out for this game, you know, the one where they basically scraped the bottom of the barrel to find somebody to do a video review of it in the first place, they would know that one of the main gripes were controls, they were too complex, and the fact that blinking was unexpected, and the guy said, well, will I be blinking the entire game? Am I going to be doing this every five seconds? No, asshole, you're going to do it a couple of times in key points in the game, such as now, when you're waking up for the first time after who knows how long, not to spoil the game for everybody who wants to actually play it. But this is an idea of how the game opens. It's very cinematic, they don't give you any kind of hints as to what's going on, and uh, let's watch the sequence for a sec here. Of course you're going to have to blink. You just woke up and a light was just shining in your face. Everybody, right now! Close your eyes for like 20 minutes, and then open them, and have a flashlight shined in them. You're gonna blur just as badly. See, this problem is not the game's problem. This is the problem with game reviewers and people not adapting to the fact that Next Gen is not gonna be used just for fancy fucking graphics and light effects. It's gonna be used for everything sooner or later. And this is not the first game where I've seen this done, but this is the best I've ever seen it done. Now, instead of copping out like so many other developers would have, the developers of this game gave you the whole sequence without a single break. Your vision is blurring, you have to blink to keep check of whatever's in front of you, and now you're going to be led, by gunpoint, from the head, into a series of hallways and stairwells of sorts, and you're going to have to navigate it. Hopefully you paid attention to how the fuck to play the game with the big-ass prompt that says, you know, push in this stick to blink, because he will shoot you in the back if you take more than four to five seconds to move your ass. And you can optionally hang around and try to risk factor it to hear what they're talking about in the hallway over there, but you really can't stay too long, so you get just enough in there. Let me open it for you. So he leads you along your trail, and basically you're just following what the developers have created at this point. It's very linear, there's no problems with it. If I've heard people died left and right in this sequence, God almighty, what's the matter, you can't walk up a fucking stairwell? I mean, watch this, does this look that complex to you? All you do is navigate three turns, go up the stairwell, and then the game kicks into cinematic overture. I mean, was that so fucking hard to do? I've heard nothing but complaints about this game, left and right, on sequences like these, that are so friggin' easy to do, it's a joke! More so, the fact that they're not forgiving and they have one linear path, allows the developers to cinematically direct this bitch, instead of doing it like, well, maybe a cutscene will start, or maybe it won't. I've seen too many examples of games where cutscenes will play only on specific marks. In this game, it happens at specific key intervals for a reason. So that the program doesn't go haywire like it did in many other games where potential was high, but the risk factor was very high, and execution, well, let's just say it was flawed. More so, this lighting effect looks fantastic, and you will see all sorts of crazy shit when it occurs in the game, because what happens is you'll see stuff kinda, you might see something that isn't there, and the developers are throwing in a lot of little secrets and things to look for in the game, aside from, you know, the main gameplay you're gonna get used to. But that's it. You won't have to deal with that blurring of vision anymore unless you stare at a light too long in this game, and I mean long, like 10 minutes, or the enemy shoots something in your face. And that doesn't happen too often. It only happens when you're really far away and you're trying to use range attacks way too much. But no, we just went from gameplay to cinematic instantaneously, and the transition is fucking flawless. It works great, and the camera is doing its job fantastically. Now, I want to hold on for a second because I want to show you something. The only real gripe you can have with the controls of this game is these fixed position third person angles they use. What you realize, however, is the developers were smart enough to design it so that even if you did kind of walk off a ledge or something by mistake or walked a little bit too far to the right, you'd still hang on for dear life. So it's not like you're going to die instantaneously. And again, we go back to cutscene. 
You go from game to cutscene, game to cutscene, and the show, or I should say the game rather, you'll, but the, the game is more like a TV series that spans multiple episodes, and the whole intro I just did with the uh, last time on Alone in the Dark is taken directly from the game. Allow well, me to show you what cinematic overture really means in a video game versus what people think it means. So, like I was saying just previously, this game is structured like a TV series or like a made-for-DVD style series with menus and everything. Every time you get to a specific point in each episode, the episode will end, but not before it gives you a nice cinematic touch and ends on kind of what could be considered a cliffhanger or a specialty note, so to speak. Such as this one right here. What have you done to her? She's one of my hosts now, as you once were. You, my most perfect puppet. So then the game asks you if you want to overwrite your progress. I obviously don't because I'm farther in the game than this. And you get the credits, and basically you can either continue from that point on or quit. If you quit, expect to see this. And let's just use the episode index. And they said the interface in this game sucked. I don't think so, IGN. This is stylish as hell. And it works great. Oh, and I won't talk. I don't want to ruin this. Just watch this and enjoy. Previously on Alone in the Dark. Those cracks! They came out of his body like they were alive! Get a grip, Hammett! The path of light's finally within our reach. Edward, who said you could talk? Mr. Scarf, take the rag doll up to the roof and kill him. Consider it done. My God. Who the hell am I? Get in. went through a lot of trouble to get you and that stone together, Theo. You'll be our light bringer. What the fuck is that noise? Save yourself! Have you seen the walls? They're alive, like in nightmares. They open up and swallow you. I swear I saw it. Anna? It's Jack. Who are you? She's one of my hosts now, as you once were. Now, was that not fucking awesome for a video game to throw that at you every time you continue from where you last left off? Every time you continue from your previous save or you load up an episode, it'll do the previously on Alone in the Dark, which you can in fact skip, unlike certain reviewers who claim you can't skip that and you have to watch it every single time. More bullshit from the fodder. Anyway, let's move on to the next segment. So, just as every episode ends, new episodes begin and they have like an opening bit, such as this one. And I'm not going to talk because there's one line here that I love when Carnby lets it out. have the keys to your mind. Now give me my stone. Now, I love Edward Carnby. A lot of people bitched and moaned about his voice acting, but you know what? For me, it's rock solid and spot on to a guy who really doesn't give a shit and can't remember anything. And that is no more excelled by this one sequence coming up. Here, have a look. I don't have your stone, and fuck you anyway. Now, a lot of reviewers have been, let's see, eager to say that this game has some of the worst voice acting ever heard in the history of gaming. I don't agree. They also claim that the cursing is petty, stupid, and unnecessary, even though, you know, the whole goddamn world is falling apart and you just woke up with an amnesia and you can't remember a goddamn thing and you got these bitches chasing you around. Now, do I agree with that? Fuck no, the voice acting fits fine, don't listen to those idiot reviewers, and once again, they are completely debunked, because I'm sorry, telling a demon to go fuck themselves is so unexpected in terms of survival horror gaming that it just worked fantastically. Alright, now here's something I want to gripe a little bit about. The melee combat system is interesting. You have to actually use the analog, push it left and push it right to swing left and right, up and down and swing up and down. This is fun and everything when there's one enemy on screen, but when you have to lock on to multiple enemies or keep swapping between, it's a pain in the ass. Also, picking up different objects when they're really close together is damn near impossible. Watch how I continue to pick up the frying pan, even though I want to pick up the TV or the ooh, ninja sword. Check it out, katana right on the floor. And of course, he picks up the frying pan again. So yes, this is a legitimate issue with the game. Is it a game killer? No. What kills the game, however, is that the AI is unrelentless. They will not give you five seconds to think. Maybe this is better this way, but I would kind of hope that they would hold back just a little bit. However, if they did hold back, the tension in the game would be gone, and the whole suspense level of having to kill everything with fire, well, the major enemies anyway, there are smaller enemies you can kill without fire, but the major enemies have to be killed with fire, and this adds a lot of tension to the game, because if you don't have an object that you set on fire, or you don't have some kind of flame-based weapon or anything to use, you're pretty much fucked until you find one. And that leads you to either make stuff, or use your brain and come up with different ways to do things. Now, I'll cover that in the next part of this review, but for now, let me just say this. 
While it might seem annoying at first, it adds to the tension and suspense of the game, and watching these fuckers burst into flames after you suffer trying to kill them normally, that's just really damned rewarding in its own sense.